Okay, welcome to Pod Nuts Daily, episode number 306. The show where computer repair techs come on the show, give you some knowledge about what they're doing in their shops, in their field, in their business, different tips, and hopefully will actually benefit you guys in a good, in a good big way. And uh, we always have awesome techs come on the show. Today, again, is no different. You guys may have heard of the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows. It's at UBCD for Win. Well, today on the show is the creator and distributor of that CD, Ben Burrows. What's going on, Ben? Hello. Not too much. A little tired, but getting through the day. Well, I'm glad he could join us. Where are you at right now? In your shop? Yes. Cool. And you, what, did you just move in there, you were saying? Um, yeah, we, uh, we've been here about five or six weeks, and uh, we had our official grand opening on the 11th. Um, but it just, I, I really wanted to make sure that everything was ready, that everything was as perfect as possible, you know, run all the Cat5, Cat6, get the network set up, mount some monitors um, to the walls, and make sure I had inventory and everything was good. Oh, cool. How's business been for you? been a little bit of a slow start need to do uh much more advertising yeah um kind of uh well we're not really that small of a town but i just i didn't really get um any good advertising done so word of mouth is uh spreading too slowly so i'm gonna have to stick some extra cash into that do you know what you're gonna do where you're gonna put the cash into uh, um i've talked to the, the one really nice thing I do kind of know, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but I do know some good people in the area. And I've spoke with a few other small business owners and they've uh, recommended, I, I don't know how many, I'm sure most cities have some type of town money saver or something like that, a little booklet you receive um, every month. And there are just different deals and coupons and ads in there. So they've uh newspapers pretty much dead so everyone has said they've gotten the best results from that and it's money well spent and it's not really that uh expensive huh. so have you considered using adwords at all i don't for this area i don't think i would really pick up very many customers from um from online advertising i do i have updated a few online listings here and there um last year I uh, signed up for the Better Business Bureau and paid them to become accredited and everything, and they checked everything out and accredited me um, because we had we've had the online store for about a year and a half, and it's slowly but surely getting bigger and bigger. Well, maybe not bigger, but it's getting better, more orders, uh, regular customers, and uh, just to show our that we're serious about it and that we're a credible business, I've invested some money into that. Uh, on a few occasions, and that that's really paid off, I think. And I uh, just happened to see someone maybe a week after we had uh, gotten our telephone line and, and everything, and someone I had, someone uh, was searching the Better Business Bureau site looking for uh, computer repair in the area, and they found our listing, and I believe we're the only one here in Fremont that's actually accredited that actually wants to spend the money on that. Um, and he called us up and I fixed up his computer for him. He's very happy. So I, I was glad to see that in action and that paid off. One of the ways, the, the, the only way I was able to see that though was through Wubra, which I don't know if I've ever talked to that. For some reason I'm thinking I may have mentioned it to you before. We probably you know? talked about it before because I used to use it. I used to like Wubra a lot. It's basically yeah. a stats tracking program that allows real-time stat tracking. I mean, you get stats up on your screen telling you in real time who's on your site, um, where they came from, what browser they're using, what operating system they're using. Then you could even, um, it's cool. Then you could even pick a visitor on your site, send him an instant message while he's on your site, have a little notification window pop up and say, you could say, tell them whatever you want. Like, are you enjoying the site? Or you could really freak them out. But it's got, it's just really powerful. I used them in their beta stage, and now they're they're paid. So I haven't I haven't actually been using it. I didn't I didn't pay. But Ben, what is your site um, that your online site that you opened? What's the name of that? That is uh, BurrowsSolutions.com, and 
Well, at least, well, you you know my, how my last name is spelled, but basically just add solutions to the end. We have uh, two S's in the middle and then an S on the end dot com. And uh, site's a little goofy sometimes. Um, I mean, uh, as you're scrolling through there, you'll see a variety of products. And the only, the only reason why I say goofy, because the first items up there were some uh, pens and, and highlighters, I believe, yeah. And uh, those are just some really good deals that I picked up. And I just, I like passing on deals to everyone else. So I figured uh, I might use them. If not, then, you know, pass on a little bit of a deal to someone else. What um, what kind of a response are you getting on this? People make, doing good with the site? Pretty good. I, you know, there's good days and bad days. Um, I try to send out a newsletter every week with new deals that I have or that I found. Um, and it's just, it, it, it's weird because I'm always looking for really good deals to pass on. Um, and it's, you know, some days I think today we've had uh, four or five orders and previous few days, the last prior two days, we only had maybe three or four orders. Huh. So it just kind of comes in spurts. One thing that I will mention about that, the, the big thing that really helped that out was um, was Google, but it was their, um, what, is it, what is that called? I forget now. Places? Uh, no, it's just a Google Merchant account where you have to, uh, it's a Google Merchant Center, and you um, have to you create data feeds with your items and everything, so that when you do a search for an item, you'll for some items if you do a search for it, it should pop up and you'll see in, in Google search. Oh, cool! Pro Solutions has it, and hopefully we have the lowest price. There are a few people out there that like to advertise. Um, low prices but then charge you like 12 or 13 dollars for shipping so we're not one of those types of sites we give it to you straight up and you have uh, several shipping methods to choose from hey that's pretty cool that uh how did you find out about that because getting listed in google for your products that's pretty good that's a pretty good thing to have it's not really that hard to do uh i can't remember who mentioned it i think uh one of uh kid that I worked with at my previous employer, um, he uh, he um, mentioned it to me, and I, I went ahead and took the, uh -oh, my camera. Don't worry, no, that's good. You're good. Uh, my, uh, he mentioned it, and I went ahead and took the time and made up the data feed. It's a pain in the butt to keep uh, up to date, but... It's well worth it. Yeah, I bet it is. It's not. It's not hard to get into either, because I've, with my experience with it now, I wouldn't say expertise yet, but I've helped a few other people. I know a few other people in the area that have uh, a few online sites, and they've set that that kind of stuff up for it, and it's helped them a little bit. But they have kind of specialty products. Cool. Hey, um. Let's get back to you. Were talking about getting listed with the Better Business Bureau, and I know we've brought it up before on sites or on shows. And a lot of times, I just like was always never in favor of it, saying what's the point, blah blah blah. But if you're going to be the only business in your area listed under there, it might be worth it. So let's talk about that. How much that cost, and then uh, tell us more about Whoopra and how you got found, how you knew that the Better the, your customers came from the Better Business Bureau site. How much does it cost to get listed with BBB? Um, they have a few different, uh, to be honest with you, it was almost a year ago, so I'm, I'm not 100% sure, don't, don't completely quote me on the prices, but it was roughly, um, I have to say it was probably about $600, okay. maybe five. Now, uh, it's cheaper if for a brick and mortar store because, um, they have to do more verification for online stores. So it's a different package that they offer, and it costs more. 
So I had to, since I had the online store, um, I had to kind of, I had to, I, that's what I had to do because I didn't have a store. Um, but I, I think that it's probably paid off because we, uh, when you went to the site down at the bottom, we do have the um, Better Business Bureau logo down there. Some people, and it's a special one that you're, uh, a lot of websites try to put one up and they're not really supposed to, or they're not really accredited, but you click it and it takes you to their page and does verify the uh, that we are accredited and gives you different information, gives you a, a score, and we currently have an A minus, but that's only because uh, of the length of time that we've been in business. Gotcha. So we have we have absolutely nothing negative on there. It's just uh, based on length of time. Right. So like, like I said, it was roughly about five fifty six hundred. Um, I guess for established businesses, they probably don't have to. Um, worry about I, I guess um, being accredited because they've been in business they have word of mouth um, different stuff like that but for someone new I think that it's that it's it definitely helps Ooh. well how did you know then you said you knew that the guys came your customers came from that Better Business Bureau site and they found you through that and you used Woopra. Why don't you tell us about Woopra for anybody who hasn't heard of it? Okay, Woopra, they they have a, um, let me see, they, they have a standalone application that, to, in my opinion, they don't seem to update quite enough. And it doesn't, it, it has some nice features, but it doesn't really seem as robust as I would like to see it. Um, but you can either go to their website and log in and you can watch what's going on on your websites there. I like standalone applications. I don't like the um, the cloud stuff. Right. Um, so basically I have the interface up and I can go, I can watch what's going on on either of the four websites of mine that I have Woopra installed on. Um, and it's just basically a little JavaScript uh, thing that you add to at least one of the pages on your HT in your within your HTML, so that then they can track when people go to the site. Um, the only real information that I can get about um, people on my website is uh, like their IP address, their location, possibly. I do see somewhere it pops up unknown or whatever. There's someone in Florida viewing the site right now. Yeah, that's me, dude. Why is oh you're in Florida? Yep. Oh, you piece of man. You know, curse curse me out because um I'm wearing shorts today and I've been wearing them for about two months. Not the same pair. I'm just saying it's beautiful out in here. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can't pull me. Oh man. How long have you been in Florida? Uh since last September. Moved down here. Tampa. You're Tampa. You're a bum. Oh, it's so, so nice. You, you were in Pennsylvania before, right? I was in Philly. Yeah. Okay. Weather's nicer, and so are the people <laughs> down here. It's nice. I won't bore everybody who's listened to me say this already. I'm, I'm just, I'm really happy to be down here. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I need to keep up with you more yeah. often. I, I apologize. I did not know No, that. no, no. I'm just saying. I've, I bragged about it for months, and now I'm, I'm over it. Okay. So. Anyway, um, they're they're gonna la have their last laugh when the lightning storms down here hit me and fry all my equipment. But until that point, I'm content. Right, or you get you get hit by something, right? Right. But uh, anyways, Woopra, it, it's very nice. If you have a website, I I would highly recommend it. For a few months over the summer, I did um, pay for it. Uh, I, it still is free. You can still do it for free. But they limit how much, once you hit a certain limit of traffic or bandwidth or something, I can't remember exactly. Uh, once you hit a limit, then it stops tracking until the month is over. And um, I actually did hit that limit a couple of times. Um, and plus there's advertisements on the right-hand side of the interface. Um, I, I just, I paid $5 a month for a few months and... 
I I'm done with that. It was it was kind of nice not to have the ads and I could see more. <coughs> Excuse me, but yeah, then there's the live chat support. I I attempted that a few times. No, but, that that uh, freaks people out. Exactly. That's what I was really worried about. I actually I tried it out on a few of my friends first and. They just basically said that it was kind of creepy or freaky, so they um, did not. Uh, they, uh, I, I, I had a feeling that it wasn't a good idea. <laughs> I agree with you. You yeah. go to a website and you get a pop up, and you think it might just be some kind of bad pop up or something, so that scares people away. Well, when they find out it's a real person, that's just as creepy to, to me, if you ask me. Yeah, some people may like it, but yeah, I think it's probably going to register as creepy more often than that. It's like when you go into a store. I, when I go into a store, I don't... A lot of times, I don't want the guy to come hounding after me and go, how can I help you? How can I help you? I, that's what it would feel like on a, on a site if you pop up a window saying, I see you're looking at my website. How can I help you? Forget it, dude. That's just, let, the, let the site do the talking. Plus, it's a lot, wor a lot of work to individually address each visitor to your site. Forget it. But, um... I used Whooper for a long time, and then um, yeah, I, once they came out of beta, they started charging, and uh, I, my stats went over that limit you were talking about. So um, I'm happy actually using AW stats on cPanel and HostGator. I, I freaking love that program; it does the job really well. So it yeah, does, those, it's, yeah. Th those do. I, I I check those stats out every so often. I I used to check it out a lot more when I was much more active with UBC for when. But the development for that has just kind of died off right. um, over the last couple of years, and we're we're trying to work on some new things and do some different things. But I mean, that's what I I left my previous job in late October, um, so I spent November, December, January, February, and most of March um, just kind of sitting around looking for a different type of job or looking for a job that still working on computers, doing my email, doing my site and everything, but I I sat there and contemplated because now, at the beginning of this month, it's been seven years since I officially launched UBC for Win, and I, I spent those months just trying to figure out, okay, do I, am I able to do this again? Can I make something that's hugely popular? Am I going to be able to you know, make it my job like I always wanted to and never really did. And I just kind of, I always wanted to open up a computer store and with all the years of experience in restaurant management and working four and a half years at a local computer store, I finally felt that I had all the pieces that I needed, all the information that I needed to hopefully be successful. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I have, uh, there's a lot of different things that I do, um, the different repairs that I'm not scared to tackle that I have either done at home or did other places, and nobody else really wants to do it, but, you know, I'll, I'll take a chance, and um, it's kind of nice when some of the other guys around town call you up and say, hey, I've got this, I know you're really, really good with laptops. I've got an iMac, and it's basically just a laptop because it's just an LCD screen with a computer with motherboard and stuff behind it. And uh, he says, I, I don't want to mess with it. I, I don't want to learn how to take it apart. And since you're good with little stuff, I figure that this might be something you could potentially do or might be interested in. And I said, I told him, yeah, and had the guy bring it over, and I, I took it apart. And Let me guess, blown caps. Yes, on the um, on the power the power no, supply. Yeah, yeah, the power supply board. Yeah. When I opening that thing up was, I, I I with laptops I have so much experience with laptops I almost never um, look at any type of manual or watch any videos on how to take it apart because it, they're mostly designed all the same way. Um, you can kind of tell that you're getting, um, that you're feeling some tension, so you know there's another screw hiding there. Right. Um, and you can do just enough tension without breaking it. So I can always figure out on a laptop, and I really don't waste any time with that. But uh, with something new and something different like that, 
Um, I watched a couple of videos, and I think I only spent maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes watching those two because they're all full of garbage for the most part or just filler kind of or I don't know. You do a lot of videos, so you make all those stupid comments and stuff throughout the thing, so you know what I'm talking about. I don't make those stupid comments. I don't think I, I think I put a couple arrows in on my videos. I don't put those dumb comments. But I'll tell oh, you, yeah. I'll tell you what. You, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Aside from insulting me with my videos, you said um. <laughs> no, you said, I'm, I'm sorry. No, now no. I re it's been a while since I've watched your videos, but I do remember it was always oh, okay. I got to go over here and digging around. Okay, here's the screwdriver over here. Uh, and what, <laughs> here, here you go. And oh, it was that bad i'm just picking on you but i remember you were looking for a screwdriver not not really digging or looking for a screwdriver but you were moving around every so often having to grab stuff so um i used sometimes when I, i've made a couple of videos and a few of the guys tell me do not do videos because you're so pale that uh, you just look like a vampire or something so all right well you show me one video where you actually see my face the point i was trying to make is and I, that's what i'm saying that's, that shouldn't stop you from doing videos but the point i'm trying to make is Yes, with laptops, people have bought my videos and then asked me, um, well, do you have a, a video on how to take apart a Sony blah, 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 X25 dash, whatever? I go, no, no, no. Watch all of my videos, all of them, no matter what the title is. If you watch all my videos, you will be able to apply that knowledge to all the laptops that you take apart. So it's the same thing with you. iMac, yeah, but the iMac, though, man, that thing was a beast. I couldn't, I couldn't get that apart. Did you get it fixed? I replaced the caps and the power supply on mine, and it, it didn't. It didn't work. It didn't work for you. No. It, well, I, yeah. I was thinking about because I've uh, someone contacted me a while ago. I can't remember. We've only talked a few times, and I've only done been on the show a few times. I think this is the third time now, maybe. Yeah. It's been a while, but uh, I do LCD uh, repairs, desktop monitor repairs also. And uh, someone contacted me about it one day, and I said, yeah, I can kind of check it out, I guess. But before you ship me anything, let us let me check out some stuff. I took apart a couple um, uh, at work, and I found that there were just bad capacitors on some of them. So I just kind of told him, sure, ship them to me, and I'll see what I can do. And I think he shipped me nine monitors, and I believe I fixed about four or five of them, maybe five. I think the odds were in my favor, or the percentage was in my favor just a little bit. Huh. Um, but still, at least they didn't end up in the junk or in the landfill or wherever. So, you know, I replaced capacitors in a bunch of them. I've done probably about 50, at least 50 of them now. And, you know, sometimes it's it, it, you can't fix it, but sometimes you can. Uh, but with that, I, with the iMac, um, I noticed that that's what it was, and... I couldn't find the caps for it uh, very easily, so I just the guy wanted his wanted it fixed as quickly as possible. So yeah. I I just ordered a new board for him, and I mean when he picked it up, I think his total bill with labor in that board was two hundred dollars even, and um, I mean the board took up about seventy five percent of that uh, the, the the actual cost for the board and everything. So. Um, I was pretty fair with my pricing. I don't charge much. And uh, he was very happy, very appreciative. He didn't have to drive an hour and a half to Cleveland and pay some uh, Mac jerk for five or six hundred dollars to right. fix. Right, right. He just had a regular PC jerk uh, fix it <laughs> at a reasonable price. Good, man. Now, I think it's good to have those special skills. Oh, yeah. Hey, I mean, is it? Yeah. I'm sorry. Some places just they don't like messing around with uh, other other stuff. They just want to deal with PCs or only deal with Intel or or whatever they want to do. But some of the places just they don't want to take a chance. And you know, I'll I don't like wasting my time, but I, I want to see if I can do it for them. So yeah, uh, I'll try stuff out. Definitely, especially when I needed the money, I would take almost any job. You know, it wasn't the difficulty of the job that's, that made me not want to do it. A lot of times it was the craziness of the person. If the guy who brought it in was a nut, that, that would be more discouraging for me than having a really difficult job. Because I, I like the challenges. It kept things interesting for a while. Right. As long as the people understand, too. I mean, I'm not trying to push that we're doing them a favor or anything. But, 
you know, at least some of us out there are willing to take a chance and we're going to uh, be responsible and be careful and be honest about everything. So, I mean, if I can't fix it, I'm not going to break anything else or mess anything else up. I'll just give it back to them, not charge them anything and tell them, hey, make a trip to Cleveland or whatever. <laughs> but uh, the thing with that that cracked me up the most, though, was uh, the video that I watched for taking, you had to take a card and slide it in there to hit a couple of latches that held one of the bezels in place. And he mentioned something about being able to buy them on eBay for like 25 or $35. And he had a separate video to show you how to make that card, but I just kind of looked at what he did to the card in his video and just kind of did that to a, a rebate debit card that I received from a mail-in rebate. And it was a little bit of a struggle, but it, it worked. Really? So, yeah. So that was kind of interesting because it, it has to bend a couple of certain ways. No kidding. For it to really reach up in there, right? It's kind of... I can't. I can't even think of a shape or yeah. anything. No, I'll tell you that. See, that stuff's satisfying, but the payoff is never financially as good as it should be for the amount of work you do. That's the only thing. You do well, enough of them, and you get. You're like this. I'm. I'm awesome. I fix this, and nobody else can. And I was so inv innovative, and the ingenuity I put into this was amazing. And then you get paid like a hundred bucks or whatever. Not that much. Well, right, but see, that's that's the thing that you have to be careful with too, because I know a lot of people want to charge for the time that, that took them to research it or whatever. And, you know, you can sit there and read the manual and watch videos and spend two hours. I, I don't think it's fair for the customer to have to charge them. I, I think maybe for the first time, uh, potentially the first customer, you may want to charge them a little bit more. But honestly, with that iMac repair, I only wa spent those 10, 15 minutes watching, watching that video. And then I just took it apart and it didn't seem to take that long and I, I think probably my I charged them maybe three quarters of an hour labor and that's probably about all I all I really spent on it huh. so I mean it was it, it was pretty fair for for me in that case because I mean sometimes it is kind of unfair like with the LCD thing yeah you know I, I only like to charge if I fix something and uh, he shipped those nine monitors down and you know I taking nine monitors apart isn't really too much work, but it's still a decent amount. And then only getting paid for four or five of them um, for all that time probably didn't pay off. But I, I hope they're still working for him and everything, of course. And I, I wish that he'd send more to me, but now I think he has one of his techs doing that or something. I got you. Do you charge flat rate or you charge per hour? Um, in the, in the store here or yeah, the, it's, it's an hourly rate. Okay. So, I mean, if it's, if it's something like smacking some memory in, I, I pretty much do that for free. Um, and I mean, anything can range from anywhere from 15 minutes of labor up to probably two hours, uh, possibly, but I, I don't, I don't like getting past, um, I don't like uh, getting past an hour and a half, and I, I very rarely get past uh, past um, one hour. Gotcha. All right, what else did you want to talk about, Ben? I don't know. That was the that was the kind of stupid thing on my part. I didn't think about it enough to really what what we were going to talk about. Um, you know, we've covered the store kind of. All right, we'll talk about UBCD for Win if anybody doesn't know about it. In the meantime, Ben, or uh, anybody in the chat room wants to ask a question to Ben, I will entertain questions. And um, go ahead and tell us you about UBCD for Win. What's in the future for it? What you plan on doing with it? And anything, anything new about it, if you want. Um, really, with UBCD for Win, nothing really has been going on. I've, uh, I do have to say, I still do have some great guys in the development team. A few of them have. Uh, fallen off in the last year and a half, maybe two years. They've, uh, some of them, I, I think I probably overworked them or something. Um, some of, a couple of them just got burnt out. Um, and right now I've kind of got a new person in the development team. He's working on something else, but I've been so busy with wasting a lot of time thinking what I was going to do 
and then now being extremely busy the last month and a half with opening up the store that I haven't been able to uh, really be there for them and get um, and get more beta testers in there for the new project that they're working on and that I'm trying to help out with. But what's we're the always, project? Uh, this one is called Multi Boot. Um, trying to think uh, what domains I tried to snag up for that. Don't um, don't tell us if you didn't snag them yet. Well, I, I always check them out first before I make any type of announcement or or anything. I don't want people taking them. Well, tell us about Multi Boot, and then I'm going to ask a couple questions that the guys have here. Okay, Multi Boot is basically something that we introduced in UBCD for Win um, that we're trying to build on and make um, better, and we're trying to transform it into a separate project. And uh, basically, it's just um, the guys making up different uh, plugin type things to where you could uh, essentially take. Um, say maybe a 16 gig or 32 gig flash drive or even like a Blu-ray disc but something that's big and just dump a whole bunch of ISO files on there and be able to boot any image that you want. Oh. Um, you can, basically it's like you can have the original UBCD, UBCD for Win, a bunch of different Linux distros, um, that that that's the main main thing with it. I know they've been working on some other stuff with it too, but just basically getting it um, just getting it kind of finished up and polished off, making sure that it's working cool um properly. Hey, all right, hey, um, <clears throat> a couple questions here. UBCD for Vista or Seven? They're asking about. Oh boy, that was something that I've that I talked about. Um, on a few occasions, and it just never really came to be. Um, Vista, or yeah, Vista was a big flop, and nobody really seemed to care about it. I still wanted to do something with it, but I never did. And I mean, uh, Windows 7 came out pretty quickly after Vista, so um, I've I've done some personal builds. And I, I've done some of the work that's necessary to create that, uh, but unfortunately, it just really looks like like we had the PE builder from Bart uh, that we purchased an OEM license for, so that we could redistribute it in our in our free download. Um, I, I think that we need to build some type of front end for that just to make it easier for uh, the end users because. It's just uh, some of the stuff just seems a little too complicated. I got you. To uh, be able to create one very easily. Okay. Jerry uh, asked, go ahead, man. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Doug. Jerry asked, what is your primary source of income at the shop and what do you expect to be the primary source of income? Laptop repair, virus remediation? Um. Currently, it's a, a big mixed bag of a lot of different things right now. Um, I think that the biggest thing that I'm probably going to see here is uh, virus removal. That always seemed to be big in this area. Um, what were some of the other things that he mentioned? Virus remediation, fixing re yeah. remedying viruses. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing, especially with all the different social media stuff, with Facebook always having uh, different things getting in there um, and infecting people's computers. Uh, just there's... Okay. It, it's it's ugly. That's just ugly. Yeah. All the oh, yeah. crap around. And I, I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing. I, I would like to see a lot more laptop repairs and just regular desktop repairs. Um, well, it's inevitable you're going to see the viruses. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. If you have a shop, it's going to happen. He says, do you see any potential revenue from repairing smartphones or iPhones? You going to do any of that? Potentially. I, I've had I've had a few people mention that to me. Um, I've had people mention uh, PlayStation 3s and uh, Xbox. I've taken apart the two Xboxes that we actually... We had an original, and then we've had, we have two 360s now. Um, I've taken both of those apart. 
I attempted to fix a PlayStation 3 for one of our cousins. Unfortunately, that didn't work out very well. Um, iPhones and iPods, I, I don't know if I really want to get into that, to be honest with you, because they're so small and they're, they're a pain to repair. And sometimes it could, be, it could look like there's one problem, but then it could turn into something else or... Sometimes people have a problem with giving you all the information or not having all the information about what really happened to it so that you can kind of get an idea of what really is bad. But I just, unfortunately, those are just so small and complex. I, I don't think that that I would uh, that I would really want to. I, I might. Okay. Last question is, what is your favorite antivirus? Kaspersky. Spursky? Yeah. Great. I've been using that for five or six years. Um, other people in town, uh, because uh, from my suggestion, have had uh, great sales with it, great customer satisfaction. I just wish that I wouldn't have given my, my idea away or uh, my super great antivirus away, but, you know, I have copies of it on my shelf, too, so... <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm I'm a partner with them and a lot of different other things too, and I sell their licenses legitimately also. So I've got a few few things going going for me there. But that I've been personally using it for five or six years, and I just absolutely love it. I've had very few people have problems. I mean, the potential is there for pretty much anybody to get infected with no matter what protection you have on there because of the mass flood of garbage that's always coming out. Uh, but Kaspersky, they're, they're on top of it. They do a really good job with very frequent updates, and they've got really smart people working for them. Cool. All right, well, thanks, Ben. I'm going uh, to turn the noise gate up to knock out some of your noise, so I'll only be able to hear you when you, when you do speak. I'm going to read some emails now, but hang on the line, and you can help me answer some emails. Okay. All right, we got um, Carrie Holzman. If you, anybody li did listen to that show, got a bunch of emails from that show. A lot of guys, or some of the, the emails are saying like they wish, they, they weren't a big fan of how Carrie handled the, the customer service problem that he was having there. And uh, Carrie did send me a response, and he, he wanted to add a little clarification of why, how, the, the, how that conversation came about. So let me just read this, just um, so we could just make that clear. He says... Um, I'm not familiar with that story anyway, so... Basically, um, he, he was... A customer hung up on him, and um, he, he was trying to get a customer to um, realize that she has a responsibility of knowing where her data gets stored when she, when she saves her information. Anyway, it's on... I think it's episode 303? I'm not sure. Anyway, he's, Carrie says... I also wish I had clarified why I had this conversation that became an argument with my, with my customer. You see, being in the business all these years, I've learned the hard way how to guarantee a happy customer every time. The way I do that is by setting my customer's expectations before I begin any work, and if the customer agrees to those expectations, I then meet or exceed them. The customer is always happy 100% of the time when the job is finished. These expectations include approximate cost, approximate time needed for repair, potential issues after the repair. Um, do you know your email password? So when I'm done fixing your computer, can we, can we can reset up your email? Do you have your printer drivers? Will you need my assistance? Or is this something you'd prefer to do on your own, etc.? So when I spoke to this customer, my goal was to set expectations. If I replace your computer with another, is there any I will need to move? She wasn't able to answer that question. So my next question was, are you better off now that the com with the computer you have, which is intermittently acting up, or would you rather roll the dice and take your chances with a new PC, knowing the possibility that there may be, may be files critical to your needs and you will no longer have access to it? Well, she didn't like that option either, but that's all I can do. I've heard too many stories of customers dropping off their PCs to techs off in the Geek Squad, and they ask the techs if the, they ask if the techs can fix their PC or remove their virus, etc., and the tech says, sure, no problem, leave it here, and it will cost X amount of dollars. Then a customer gets the call that the computer is done, they pay for it, bring it home, plug it in, turn it on, only to discover the whole thing has been wiped out. Yes, the computer works now, but without any programs, data, email, it's useless to them, and they often get angry, and some even break down emotionally and cry when they find out their stuff is gone forever. That will never happen with one of my customers. 
Finally, if a customer is this difficult before I do any work, there is a huge warning sign that is going to be difficult. This is going to be a difficult customer. Imagine how much more difficult this customer could have become if I did the work and there was any inconvenience on her part. And who would take the blame? I always say there's a difference between a customer, a computer technician, and a computer consultant. A tech will do whatever you tell them to do with no care of the consequences. You want your Wi-Fi set up with no security and violation of HIPAA laws? A generic tech will do whatever you want for a fee. As a consultant, I see it as my job to protect my customers and for them, inform them of HIPAA law violations, as well as numerous other privacy and security productivity issues that may result as a consequence of what they are asking me to do. I will then offer an alternative that, alternative that permits them to still accomplish what they need, but in a way that also protects them and limits the inconvenience of liability. That said, had I done the work as requested, it would not have been a, made a difference, and the client would have learned nothing, and it would have been a huge waste of my time. This client is 32 miles away each way from where I live, which cost me about $12 in gas uh, at current prices to go round trip. So long as the wireless keyboard was plugged in, the same problem would have existed regardless if this user got a new PC or not. This Because the reason that this customer was getting magic typing on her computer, which was one of the original problems, the computer was magically typing. Um, it was because a wireless keyboard from another computer was picking up that, the receiver from this computer was picking up the wireless keyboard of another computer. He says, these, these must be old wireless keyboards that they're using, since all new name brand wireless keyboards create unique codes with the receiver to prevent this from happening. Given the nature of what this client does, I have, I have uh, made a note to myself to discuss banning wireless keyboards in the office for security purpose, but I'll wait until after tax season for this meeting and to make those suggestions. Besides, who needs a wireless keyboard anyway? The keyboards are sta all stationary, so ultimately it's just going to be a frustration when the batteries die. For this reason, in my opinion, all keyboards should be wired, and all mice should be wireless, since a wire on the mouse often interferes well with its movement. A mouse moves, a keyboard typically does not, making wireless unnecessary for a, a key... A, making wireless unnecessary for a keyboard for most people, and especially those who work in an office. Thanks, Carrie. That was, that was his response to that. You should have, you should have cut my video up. That way uh, you could have saw my facial expressions. I was kind of watching myself and amusing myself. <laughs> um, oh, dang it. This uh, heater is back on. Don't worry about it. Well. The, the noise is so bad to begin with, this is not going to be any worse. All right. So um, thank you, Carrie, for that. And I told I told anybody who does email me if, if you want to send an email to Carrie explaining what your gripe is with what he said d do it I mean he you have his uh, his email address and his website um, I think the main thing Carrie that people were concerned with was not whether you were right or not about what the customer needed to know but how the conversation got handled as far as um, feelings emotions you know got heated did it get heated did it get people get hurt feelings whatever angry the emotional aspect of of handling the human emotion and reaction of the whole thing is, I think, what people were uh, were writing in about. All right, this next one is from Robin. Just listen to your podcast um, with Carrie Holzman. Carrie's a gr Carrie is a great interview, very bright and opinionated. It sounded to me that he made a difficult situation worse with his, by his customer reaction, and it was very interesting instructive to hear the two of you hash it out my expectation on the outcome is that he's going to lose that account unless he accepts that he, that that he handled that call badly and sits down to have a thoughtful chat with the owner and problem and the problem woman to discuss how they can learn something from this and go forward productively love to hear more interviews with carrie and how it turned out so um i'd, I'd like to hear how that turned out as well all right next email is from jorge he said this is a good article from by Computer World. You go to blogs.computerworld.com, and you hit skip this ad. There's an article called How to Handle People Who Ask for Computer Help. And it looks like it's written from Don R. Crawley. I don't know the dude, but it looks like a pretty good article. You guys can check it out at blogs.computerworld.com. Thanks, Jorge. Always good to get nice little tips like that. Google Voice. Let me see if my audio is hooked up. Should be. And let's see. We could play some uh, some voicemail here. Um, give me one second, guys. Here is a voicemail. Hey, Steve. This is uh, Carlos in Ulysses, Kansas, with uh, Tech USA Computer Services. And uh, thanks for accepting my phone call. I appreciate you giving me your your new number. And uh, still listening to the show. It's been a while since I've called, but... The new number, by the way, guys, is new to him. 
<laughs> it's the number I've always been saying. So do not, uh, d- don't try any other number if you want to reach us on voicemail. It's seven zero seven six Pod Nut is the number. Here we go, Carlos. I wanted to uh, inform the listeners about um, an incident I had with a ASUS computer. I uh, ordered a ASUS laptop, 14 inch. I don't have the model number now. I, I gave it back to the client. He's a veterinarian with. Uh, he's got his own clinic, and he needed. Uh, a Windows XP machine, but it's hard to get that nowadays. So I bought a the Asus laptop with the downgrade XP downgrade, and went ahead and got the computer. Came with Windows 7 Professional, uh, had both operating systems on there, recovery disk, uh, loaded XP, and on the first disk it it did load, and then when it asked for disk number two, uh, which is a driver update CD, um, I kept getting a blue screen. And this was a brand new computer, so um, I called ASUS uh, technical support and they would not give me any support because um, they said they no longer support Windows XP. But I I said, hey, this machine, this is a new machine I just bought from you guys. And they they said, no, I'm sorry, we we can't support it. So what I did was after a couple of times, I went ahead and, and loaded XP Professional from my uh, my own OEM CD from Microsoft. Then uh, after I, I reloaded the operating system, that went smoothly. And when I was up on Windows, I went ahead and got their driver disk, and, and I noticed um, there was a long list of uh, drivers that it was updating, and four of the, the drivers were... Um, they weren't drivers. They were actually uh, XP hot fixes for Service Pack 2. Uh, and I noticed that because when I clicked on it, the information, it said SP2 update hot fix. So I unchecked those and installed everything else, and everything worked great. Well, the first time I actually tried it with the, the hot fix, the XP uh, hot fix is uh, the Machine Pro. So I knew this, you know, it wasn't compatible with Service Pack 3, and that's what came with um, the machine, so SP3. So that that's what the problem was. Uh, I unchecked those hot fixes and saw the drivers from this, from that driver disk. Everything loaded nicely, and um, everything was good. I uh, just wanted to make, make uh, the listeners aware of this in case they um, decide to do a ground, downgrade, because a lot of businesses, um, some of their software is not, compatible with Windows 7. Okay, and that email voicemail got cut off, and he's got a continuation here that just, it's a short little ending. Let me play that real quick. Here we go. Oops, I don't want to call him. I want to play the voicemail. Here we go. Hey, continuing from that first uh, phone call. Um, but anyway, I, I got it loaded, and um, just wanted to make you aware of that uh, in case somebody decides to downgrade. Um, thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks. For, thanks again. I'll. I'll uh, I look forward to listening to more shows. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Awesome. You got anything to add on that, Ben? Well, thank you very much. First of all, Carlos, for that for that uh, great information. Definitely uh, need to know that kind of thing, especially on a new yeah. laptop. Yeah, Ben. Not really. I I had a few thoughts when I was listening to it, but those were all squashed. Uh, okay. That one's. Uh, that one's. That one's kind of weird. I wonder why. I mean, generally the hot fixes and stuff, they are supposed to check what level you're at. And if it's a newer service pack, then it's not supposed to install the, the hot fix. Right. But I'm I'm gonna get. I, I, I don't know. That's any anything and everything is always possible to happen to uh, make our lives harder and give us reason to make the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. All right, this is from Rodney. He says, hey, Steve, I'm replacing the LCD screen for my landlady. It's a Dell N7010. I've disassembled the laptop without problems. The model on the LCD screen says it's an LP173WD1, parentheses, TL, parentheses, A2 from LG. When I search eBay, I see this particular model listed, but the seller specifies that the item is for another Dell laptop model. Do you have any advice for me on this? Do you think since it's the same LCD model, it would work? It would work in the N710 as well. Thanks for the assistance, Rob. I'll, I'm sure Ben has an opinion on this, but I would, lo- I, I would, uh, I would have the opinion that 
if the model number is exact on the back of this screen, then yes, it will fit in that in the machine that you just took it out of, definitely. Um, I, what do you say, Ben? I have to agree with that because when you're looking at, I generally when I'm replacing an LCD in a laptop, uh, and it used to be pretty much true, but I, I got burned on that once or twice. Um, generally, the the LCD. I can usually find it just by looking for the model number of the laptop. But now with the new LED, um, LCDs coming out more, and of course them not making it uh, really known very well unless you actually take it apart. Because I, I'll be honest, in the past, uh, I've just looked at the model number and not even taken it apart because it can take maybe a week to get the LCD in and I don't want to lose screws or have uh, anything else potentially get damaged. Um, but ever since that happened to me the last time, I, I think it only happened once and I, I got the wrong one and uh, I, I won't do that anymore. And if you, I say that, because I, like I said, in 99.9% .9 of the time, I was successful with just the L, the laptop model. Since you have the model of the actual LCD, that should be um, that 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 should do it for you. I think you would be safe with that. I would yeah. probably recommend though uh, checking out some, doing a few other searches with just the model number to see. Because sometimes people will know, hey, I've only got the, I, I only have one. I'm the only one that has this listed, so. I'll jack up the price an extra 50 bucks. So you may be able to find it a little bit cheaper, but... Well, I'll tell you, Timster said on Podnuts yesterday... Sorry to cut you off, Ben. They, no um, uh, there's, always, there's an eBay seller I recommend for laptop screens. It's DVD Super 999. I used to buy a lot of screens from her. It turned out to be a her. They are um, yeah? I, I think they're out of Texas. I think I know who you're talking about oh. there. Their prices are pretty much right in line. I've, I've contacted them before and bought directly from them, but they uh, they generally have almost the lowest price, but they're they're very good. I received a uh, LCD that was damaged when it was shipped, and I it was weird to me because I never had to return it or anything for them. They just shipped me out a new one that day and or another one that day, and received it a few days later, and we were good. That's the thing. It, the customer support is great. I never yeah. received a damaged one, but it's always packaged well, and I never had a problem. So um, Timster also recommended that she would re prefer that you call her, then order online, and you might get a better price. Bottom line of this is is oh, always, if you can, order from the model of the screen. Look, you're gonna if you're gonna replace a laptop screen, you got you're gonna take the screen out anyway. So take the screen out first, get the model number off of the screen. Don't go by the model of the laptop. Go by the model number of the screen. Order the screen and you should be perfectly fine. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. That, I think it's hilarious that every time we go to Ben, his he the background's different. What, around, yeah. what do you swivel that thing around every time? Uh, I I moved up to the front of the store. To try <laughs> every to time I go over him, he's in a different spot. It's hilarious. All right. Next email is from Marco. He says, "Hey man, just wanted to let you guys know I installed Mac OS 10 on my Dell Inspiron 1525, and it works like a charm." I'm very happy with it, and uh, best of all, I just saved a couple hundred of dollars by not having to buy an Apple computer to run a Mac. It runs my Mac, It runs like my MacBook Pro that I had a few months ago. Anyway, if anybody wants to try it, here's a link I have used, and it was really easy. It's MacYourPC.com. Title of the article is Install Mac on a Dell Inspiron 1525. Thank you, Marco. Last email is from Tom. He says... Um... I got this from A Shampoo today. What's A Shampoo? Is that an antivirus? I think they have antivirus now, but I think they used to specialize. They first started out, I think, with a CD and DVD burning software. Okay. Maybe not. Yeah, I think they have that too, but they have a few other uh, goofy tools. Okay. I've never really cared for them that much, but, uh, but anyway. Well, apparently Tom's a... A shampoo customer, and he got the email, the dreaded email today. We are writing to concern, writing to you concerning an important issue. We regret to tell you that we also detected an unauthorized access to one of our server systems. We assume that the attackers were able to purloin. I don't know what the hell that means, and that's just an attempt to confuse people. Who the hell says purloin? They're trying to sound sound 
cool by using big words. Yeah, <laughs> they're trying to confuse people, make them go blank. Um, the attackers were able to purloin data of customers. Sensitive data such as billing information, etc., is not affected by this because a shampoo does not store this data. We summarized all pieces of information concerning this incident for you and would like you to read the following website, ashampoo.com forward slash data theft. That's interesting. So, um, hang on a second. I got to look up purloin. Let's see what this stupid <laughs> word means. I received that email also, but I think I got mine either yesterday or Monday. Oh, really? So yeah. per purloin is to steal often in a violation of trust. And it's pronounced... Purloin. Let me give that to you again. Purloin. There you go. All right. So don't purloin things from others, people. Let's, uh, I think that's... I think that's it for the voicemails and emails. If you want to send us more emails, send them at mail at podnuts.com. If you want to send us a voicemail, call 7076-PODNUT. And if you want to come on the show, you go to podnuts.com slash guests. All guests are required. It's very fun. It's very easy. All guests are required to have a wireless or a headset mic, a, a wired uh, internet connection. Yeah. Um, what else do they need? Oh. Day, stuff to talk about. We talked about planning. <laughs> we talked about planning. And anything else that you want to bring. Um, I would definitely uh, encourage people signing up. We have a, a bunch of dates lined up for Podnuts Daily. Podnuts Daily is done Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anybody could sign up if they feel like they want to contribute. Like Ben here. Ben, I appreciate you signing up, man. No problem. Um, <laughs> next time I will be prepared. I, I apologize. Yeah, I didn't say you weren't prepared, did I? <laughs> Don't worry about it, dude. I, I, I'm glad you signed up. I mean, a lot of guys, um, would I think, would like to come on the show or would like to share, but whatever's holding them back is holding them back. So nothing should be holding you guys back. Just uh, sign up and uh, enjoy, enjoy the pod nuts atmosphere. All right, man, anything you want to end off on, Ben? Any last comments? Anything you want to plug? Uh, I don't think so, really. The only the only final thing is to please visit burrowsolutions.com. Um, he, he has my uh, last name up there, and that's just solutions, which is plural, with an S on the end, dot com. Uh, we have all kinds of different uh, great deals going on. I try to find, whenever I find a good price on something, the... Um, you can see HP Inc. right there. I found a great price on that, and uh, everything is new, unused, great prices, uh, honest shipping, and uh, we ship everything out fast, and we have uh, everyday low prices, not just uh, goofy specials every other day or whatever, but um, it, it was a pleasure being on again next time. Uh, I, I again apologize for not having the headset. Um, I just with moving everything over the last month, month and a half, I I lost, I misplaced it somewhere. I think it may still be in my home office. But, oh really? Uh, Don't worry about it, man. I, 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 was thinking, I was thinking maybe we could uh, find a, I could find a really good price on a uh, on a nice one, and then make it a prerequisite that that uh, future guests have to uh, buy that one from Burrow Solutions back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can make that prerequisite. I can't enforce it. Oh, um, I do recommend Plantronics, by the way, if anybody's looking for a headset. Get a Plantronics USB headset. You'll be golden. That's all I have to say. All right, so check out BarrowSolutions.com. You know where to find it. Again, Ben is the creator of the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows at UBCD for Win. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. That's going to be it for Podnet Study for today, and we will see you next time.